Okay, so it's my pleasure to introduce Maria Francisca Zabalaga Haberman, and she will be presenting Twisted Development, Assessing the Educational Value of a 4D Interactive Embryonic Gut Tube Model. And this uh, abstract was accepted at AAA as a poster award, uh, poster presentation award finalist. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you so much, Corey, for the introduction. I would like to point out again my email address as well as Twitter handle. If you have any questions and you would like to reach out, reach out later, please feel free to do so. A little bit of background. Um, embryology is fundamental to anatomical understanding in medical education. However, it is often taught as a minimally integrated subject in courses. And with changes in curricula, some of the major challenges in teaching and learning um, embryology are the reduced curricular hours, the limited uh, visual and physical aids to demonstrate the complex changes that occur not only in 3D spatial dimensions, but also in the fourth dimension in time. Students mostly utilize 2D book images to learn and understand these difficult concepts. Studies have shown that 3D hands-on and 4D resources enhance learning outcomes and engagement. So knowing these, we developed a 4D interactive embryonic gut tube model with arts and crafts materials that can demonstrate gut tube development from week four to week 12. Here, you can see a student going through the process of gut tube development in herniation, rotation, and retraction. The aim of our study was to assess the educational value of a 4D interactive embryonic gut tube model and the student perceptions on educational value of the model. Our hypothesis was that the use of the 4D embryonic gut tube model in an integrated gross anatomy course will enhance student learning over the 2D book, textbook images. In a Comayor B exam randomized single blind study, 184 first year medical students who had already completed their GI development content lecture were recruited, and our study was part of an active review session for them. All of the students took the same pre-quiz before interacting with their assigned resource, and they, they were randomized into um, control and experimental groups of six to eight, uh, to eight each um, group. Um, then um, students in the control group were provided with a series of 2D embryology textbook images depicting gut tube development from week four to 12 with specific number of structures. Students in the experimental group were provided with a 4D resource demonstrating the same process and the structures as the 2D images. As you can see here, um, both the structures have the same um, tags and structures like seven and eight, which are the head and tail of the pancreas. Both groups completed an activity worksheet with identical learning objectives, utilizing their assigned resource. After completing their activity, both groups took the same post quiz and surveys. The post quiz contained different questions than the pre quiz to control for repeated quiz effect, but they were guided by the same learning objectives and the level of difficulty was the same. After completing the survey, students switched resources and interacted with the other resource. After interacting with both resources, students voted for their preferred resource on the way out of the room. Data analysis for learning outcomes and survey were completed, including theme analysis of student comments. A total of 156 data sets were uh, completed data sets were um, collected with consent of the students as the students had the option of um, removing their data from the study. Our learning outcomes showed that both control and experimental post quiz performance improved significantly after interaction with the assigned resource with an effect size of 0.27. The percent change in correct answers from pre quiz to post quiz between both groups was not significantly different, suggesting that learning occurred regardless of the resource type that was utilized. In terms of perceived engagement and educational value of the assigned resource, both groups rated their resource high with no significant difference between the groups. Additional analysis showed that students felt that their resource was helpful for understanding three main concepts in adult anatomy, the development of the digestive organs, the development of the mesenteries, and the anatomic rotation of pancreas, bile duct, and duodenum. Even though we saw a high trends on the experimental group, there was no significant difference um, between the groups or items, suggesting that both resources were equally helpful to understand these concepts. 
After exposure to both resources, exit poll revealed that both groups prefer the 4D model over the 2D resource with an effect size of 0.74, suggesting that the 4D resource will be the resource of choice for students when learning that to development. Student feedback had similar themes between both groups, as the students felt their assigned resource was helpful to understand GAT2 development, and they all wanted more time for resource interaction and activity. A unique theme for the experimental group was that they wanted a demo or tutorial on how to demonstrate GAT2 development using 4D, the 4D resource, even though students had written instructions on how to interact with the model during the activity. In conclusion, we saw significant learning outcomes regardless of the resource type, which leads to rejecting our hypotheses, as there was no significant difference in the learning outcomes between the control and the experimental group. Despite of the similar learning outcomes, students from both groups prefer the 4D embryonic model. Students utilizing the 4D model first express that they would like a tutorial demonstrating GATS of development in the 4D resource, which is a more passive learning and teaching experience. Some of our limitations were group effect, as the students worked in groups to complete the assigned activity, which may have influenced our results. The time limit, students had only 50 minutes to complete the entire study. And the experimental group, the 4D model may have intimidated those students as they had to interact with the model on their own without having to be taught on. For future directions, we would recommend repeating the same study, allowing more time, smaller groups, and potentially a short tutorial demonstrating gaps of development for the 4D resource. We would also recommend assessing the group effect and learning outcomes, as well as active learning by repeating the same study in a more passive and individualized learning setting with no group work or active review session. It will be also um, useful to study the effect of the use of the same 4D resource by students before or while learning the content rather than after the content. I would like to acknowledge my capstone committee and mentors and everyone else who has made this uh, project possible. Thank you for listening and for joining us in our um, virtual symposium. Any questions? Great. Thank you, Fran. Um, if there are any questions, please submit them here. I have one um, chat box submission that says, thanks for an interesting presentation. Despite being art-based, the images of the model appeared quite high, high fidelity. How long did model um, construction take? That's the first question. Oh, so uh, the development of the models took um, quite a bit of time because there was a prototype that was built and then received feedback from students as well as faculty. Um, so it was a process of a couple of months. But when you're thinking about building the model once that the plans are completed, um, you can build the model probably, if you're a good seamstress, um, within 10 hours. Okay. Follow-up question to that is, are there or will there any protocols and directions for the model design that will be made widely available? So we are currently working on the copyright um, and for the model, and our hope is that we can actually develop the protocol and make it available for um, as an educational resource for others to utilize. And so we're in the process of working on that right now. Great, thank you. And the last bit of questions, um, let me see, um, was, um, sorry, I'm dealing with, did the students use the same amount of time for each resource? I wonder if despite the same learning outcomes, one was more efficient in communicating information than, other, than another. So the students in the study both had the same amount of time. So they had 15 minutes to interact with their, with their assigned resource um, on the first part of the study. At the end, they all interacted with both, with the 4D and the 2D. Um, so part of, um, you know, despite the learning outcomes, I think it's hard to tell if one was more effective than the other as the results on learning outcomes were similar for both. Um, 
which is why we would recommend doing this study again in a more passive learning because literature um, supports that you know, group study and active review sessions enhance learning. And so this was tested during an active review session with groups. And so I think we would have a better idea if one is better than the other, um, doing it passively, potentially. Great. Well, that is all the time we have for Fran. And that concludes um, the virtual symposium presentations. Thank you so much, everyone, who stuck with us throughout this um, trial, if you will. Before you go, if you could please complete this poll, which I'm activating right now, that would be great. Just two questions to gather your feedback. Um, and also, the speakers, if you could please activate your videos so that the audience can see you. I just want to thank the presenters today for being brave and um, really volunteering to give this, this talk at a virtual symposium um, under you know, unfortunate, unfortunate circumstance of the annual conference being canceled. Um, they really stepped up to share um, their study with the wider public. So I really want to thank the students today. And I'd like to thank my co-host, Corey. I would also like to ask the presenters to please um, submit your email address and Twitter handle um, in the chat box for the audience. And we'll try to put all of our presenters' email address and contact info available on Anatomy Connected as well for you to take. Um, and with that, Corey, did you have any concluding remarks? Just great work to all of our presenters uh, uh, and great work persevering through some of the challenges of a virtual symposium. Uh, and thank you, Lisa, for all of your great work spearheading this effort to give our students this opportunity. So I'm glad I got to work with you on this project. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you again, everyone who's, um, who's joined us. I miss you all. And I, I hope that we can all see you again very soon in person, um, definitely at um, the anatomy meeting uh, in 2021 in Indianapolis. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everyone.